uh, if I can now ask uh, Dr. Ahmed Javat Ann to give his paper, please, uh, which is called Vada Cyprus. Uh, Ahmed is the Vice President of the Islam Ali Foundation. Thank you. Before I start to read my paper, I would like to thank the organizers that they invited me here to have the chance to talk to you. Although I sent before here to the British Parliament my view about the situation in the North, and it was reported in the second report of the Foreign uh, Affairs Committee. But uh, even in Cyprus, it's not easy to find such forums so that we can talk together. Although the gates are open, but uh, unfortunately, I will end with this sentence that there is no political cooperation in this sense, and it is still lacking. My ninth book, published in Istanbul in June 2002, had the title Coadis Cyprus. In almost one year, the publishing house had run out of the 1,250 copies it printed, and there was a second print run. On the back cover of the book, I quoted Mr. Turan Güneş, the Turkish foreign minister during the 1974 invasion. Let's take the half of the island now, create a fait accompli, and they cannot pull us out from there in 20 years. God knows what happens later. Different generations of Turkish and Greek Cypriots who do not know each other will not be able to live together anymore. Now that since uh, 23rd of April 2003, the contacts between the two sides of the so-called Green Line are allowed by the Turkish Cypriot regime, albeit limited, I remembered the above sentences by Mr. Güneş in Geneva, told in Geneva in 1974, which were recorded by the columnist Güneri Civaoğlu in Sabah newspaper on 19th July 1994. In the first week, more than 130,000 Cypriots crossed to the other side, and especially the younger generations showed a lot of interest in getting to know each other. I was amazed to hear many Turkish Cypriots speaking the Cypriot dialect of the Greek language very well and enjoying the togetherness with their compatriots after 29 years of forceful division. A lot of moving stories were shown by the TV stations and written in the press, north and south. There is a lot yet to be recorded. As many were skeptic about the future attitude of the Turkish Cypriot leadership and the Turkish military authorities, there was a rush to, check, to the checkpoints in order to visit old villages and places where the two communities used to live before 1974, before an eventual closure of the gates by the Turkish Cypriot leadership. Everyone knows that the Turkish Cypriot leadership had, begun a master, had been a master of provocations in the history of Cyprus problem, and they have not been forgotten. It was very significant that the Turkish and Greek Cypriot working people celebrated May Day, 1st of May 2003, at Eleftheria Square in the Greek Cypriot quarter of Nicosia in the morning, and at Sarayani Square in the Turkish Cypriot quarter of Nicosia in the evening. This was the first time for after 45 years. In 1958, after the common demonstrations of the Turkish and Greek Cypriot workers against the British colonial administration and their Turkish Cypriot collaborators who were pursuing a policy of partitioning the island and trying to create enmity between the two communities in Cyprus, the Turkish Cypriot leadership and its underground organization TMT forced and threatened Turkish Cypriot workers to resign from the common left-wing trade union PEO. In the months of May and June 1958, the Turkish Cypriot newspapers were full of advertisements stating that the, Turk the workers supported the Turkish Cypriot leadership policy and no contact with the PO anymore. A wave of terror was started against those who were seen as the leaders of the progressive Turkish Cypriots. Four Turkish Cypriots were killed and others were wounded by the TMT. Then we lived through the night of the 6th of June 1958 when the provocative bomb explosion went off in front of the door of the Turkish Information Bureau of the Turkish Consulate in Nicosia. The Turkish Cypriot leader, Mr. Denktaş, confessed years, years later that it was not a Greek Cypriot who placed the bomb, but a Turkish Cypriot friend of his. It was a similar provocation to the 6th and 7th of September events staged in Istanbul against Greek properties. The Turkish Cypriot mob started to loot and burn Greek Cypriot properties in the Tahta Galea and Ayas Lucas quarters of Nicosia. <coughs> Parallel to these events, thousands of nationalist Turks demonstrated in Istanbul, shouting the slogan of either partition or death. Dr. Kicik was saying, I quote, it was not possible anymore that Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots can live together.
End of quote. The murder of nine Greek Cypriots in the outskirts of Gönili village on 12 of June 1958 was another provocation staged during this period. We later witnessed witness the murder of Ahmed Gürkan and Ayhan Hikmet by the TMT. The two advocates were publishing Jumhuriyet Republic newspaper, weekly newspaper, which propagated the cooperation and friendship between the two communities of the Republic of Cyprus, and which made sharp criticism of the partitionist policies of the Turkish Cypriot leadership. In April 1965, Dervish Ali Kavazoğlu, the Turkish Cypriot Akel Central Committee member, was murdered together with his Greek Cypriot friend Kostas Michaelis only because they were trying to foster friendship between Turkish and Greek Cypriots. After 1958, December uh, 63 and the summer of 74, many years have passed away. The Turkish Cypriot leadership went on repeating the same myth that Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots cannot live together. But thousands of Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots proved them wrong by visiting each other's site after the walls of shame were open. The cases of Titin Aloizidu and Ahmed Javid An contributed significantly to the division of to the decision of Turkey and the Turkish Cypriot authorities to lift the ban on the freedom of movement across the Green Line. According to the newspapers, Turkey was under pressure from European Court of Human Rights that their rulings had to be implemented as soon as possible. The Turkish authorities were forced to give the order to the Turkish Cypriot leadership to allow visitors to both sides of the divide. It came as a shock for both Greek and Turkish Cypriot politicians as tens of thousands of Cypriots crossed to the opposite side to look around and find how the things have changed in the last 29 years. Naturally, people chose to visit their old homes and properties, which they left over 20, 29 years before and they had not been allowed to visit since. The long Easter holidays were used especially by Greek Cypriots to visit the occupied part of the island with their cars in masses. Some left-wing Turkish Cypriot politicians commented on the opening of the Green Line, attributing this to the four big demonstrations of the Turkish Cypriots, organized jointly by this country's other platform and the common vision. Although these demonstrations sent shivers down the backs of the local Turkish Cypriot administrators and Turkish government, showing that Turkish Cypriot themselves were striving for a solution contrary to the intransigent policies of the Turkish Cypriot leadership, there was no mention of the no mention by the masses of the removal of the movement restrictions across the dividing line. Even the flag of Republic of Cyprus, which was brought by a young person to the meeting, was not allowed by the Republican Turkish Party officials to be carried. Later, when the belated measures of the government of the Republic of Cyprus for Turkish Cypriot citizens were announced, again the CTP was critical of them, defining them as minority rights. One should remember also the appeal of the CTP to the visiting head of the EU, Mr. Simitis, when he met oppositional Turkish Cypriot political parties that the EU should adopt the Turkish language as one of the official languages of the EU, even before the northern Turkish occupied part of Cyprus officially enters the EU. Mr. Denktash was quick to thank Mr. Talat for his anti-Greek Cypriot policies in line with his decades-long nationalist policies. Nodab CTP was in the mass media every day and night after the appearance of the Anan plan, trying to attack the dissatisfaction of Turkish Cypriots from the devastating economic situation prevailing in the occupied north and turning in this into party, party votes in the general elections of December 2003. The same CTP leadership was in the foreground defending the settlers' so-called rights as equal TRNC citizens to cross the Green Line. 